more in training acts, just about to go for a little open water swim in the new entry level Roka wetsuit. I think that this might even be equally as disruptive to the wetsuit industry as their very first wetsuit because at the price point that they told me that it's coming in at it is like so 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 much better than anything else out there for entry level wetsuits for beginner triathlon wetsuits this is what you want hands down i'm gonna swim i'll explain So all right, Trainiacs, before I tell you about this suit right here, I wanna explain what you're looking for in a beginner triathlon wetsuit. And it's three things, fit, flexibility, flotation. When a new triathlete is taking up the sport, they often wonder like, do I need a specific triathlon wetsuit? Well, the issue with most new triathletes is that they aren't comfortable in open water and fit, flexibility, and flotation all go into making you more comfortable in the water and a really good wetsuit is going to help alleviate that panic response, that little bit of fear, that little bit of discomfort. It's all going to go into helping you and triathlon wetsuits, at least really good ones, address all of those panic issues while making you look really good and like you fit in. So, when it comes to fit, you're looking at something that fits you nicely, that it isn't too tight, and that tightness can create that uh, bit of tightness and that little bit of panic response that is common to a lot of endurance athletes. And you also don't want something that's so loose that it's actually bringing on water. Flexibility, when it comes to moving, you wanna be able to move freely. You want to be comfortable. If you can't actually move in a normal range of motion, you're not going to be able to swim very well. You're gonna swim like a log, you're gonna drag a little bit, you're not going to be efficient. More than anything, you're gonna be fighting the wetsuit, tiring out your shoulders, making the rest of the race hard. If you've ever heard the phrase, you can't win it in the swim, but you can lose it in the swim, the lose it in the swim is often when athletes end up tiring themselves out in the swim and not being able to execute the rest of the race. So if the wetsuit isn't flexible and you're tired, getting out of the swim totally spent, isn't really doing you any favors. And then as far as flotation is concerned, triathlon wetsuits are made strictly of neoprene and they have specific flotation with a good wetsuit to get the legs up and then the body goes down. So with the chest going down and the legs going up, you're gonna be streamlined across the surface of the water and you're not gonna feel like anything is sinking, creating that panic response. It's also a safety mechanism that if you do end up having a panic or you're not comfortable, you need to take a little chill out, you just float on your back and you know what? You can probably let the current of all of the swimmers around you do a lot of the work for you. So let me tell you a story about this guy. They sent this out to me for the last six weeks and I've been using this for my open water swimming for the last six weeks before they even had a price point attached to it. What they said was we have an entry level wetsuit and we think the price is gonna be pretty good. Why don't you just tell us what you think? I came back expecting the wetsuit to basically be the same price as the Roka Maverick Comp, which is their current entry level wetsuit. And they said, no, 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 we're gonna make it way cheaper. And I said like, how much cheaper? And they said, well, think close to as cheap as the cheapest wetsuit on Amazon, which astounded me because this is better than the Roka Maverick Comp. This is close to as good as the Roka Maverick Pro because it has all of that good fit features. It's not carrying any water. It's also nice and flexible, so there's no tightness across the chest. The shoulders are as supple and nimble, I would say, as some of their seven, nine, $1,200 Roka wetsuits. And the flotation profile of this wetsuit has less flotation in the upper body, more flotation in the lower body, so you get streamlined across the water, and all of these are features that people typically had to give up with their entry-level price point wetsuits. Not the case anymore. And boom, let's talk about the features of this wetsuit that you can expect. It has all the standard features that you would expect from a Roka wetsuit. It has different panels for the chest, for the sides, for the shoulders, for the lower body. The entire idea is that it's going to get your feet, if these are the feet, up in the water 
and it's going to allow your body to rotate easily side to side while not letting your legs sit low in the water causing drag. How it does that is with a thicker center panel, thinner arms, thicker legs. Also has cuffs here on the edge so that as you are swimming, you're not grabbing water because of a loose cuff. The ankle cuffs down here are a thinner material so that when you want to kick off this wetsuit, you can kick it off really easily. It's not cheating that ability to kick it off easily by cutting them off short like a lot of wetsuit companies do because they just don't want to have that thin material that is quite expensive down here. When that happens, you end up losing buoyancy because there's less neoprene, but here you've got all the additional buoyancy with the ability to kick these off really easily. It's got the nice liner inside so that it's nice and comfortable on the inside and you're not gonna have any hot spots rubbing where any of the seams are. And you've got the drawstring so that you can pop yourself out of this thing when you come into transition one. Now you might be saying, Taryn, don't other entry level wetsuits have all of these features? Kind of, but let me get out of this before I turn into a baked potato and I'll discuss how this compares to the other triathlon wetsuits out there on the market at the same price point of under $300. So I'm going to compare all of the under $300 wetsuits to the Roka wetsuit, starting from what I think is the least suitable up to what I think is probably the most comparable to the Roka Maverick. This is the Synergy wetsuit that I've reviewed before. It's the cheapest wetsuit that you can find on Amazon. A lot of people end up looking towards this because it's $200 and the ratings are quite high. Now I ended up reviewing this wetsuit and I found that the arm cuffs were really, really loose, grabbed a lot of water. The ankle cuffs were really loose and created a lot of drag. It felt like a burlap sack, like my shoulders got really, really tired. It didn't fit very well, so it didn't have very good fit, didn't have very good flexibility, and I didn't even find it to be that good at flotation. So. I actually wouldn't recommend this wetsuit whatsoever. This next one is the Tier Hurricane wetsuit. Now this is coming in at $250 and this is a perfectly fine wetsuit. I've used Tier wetsuits in the past. The issue that I have with this coming in at $250 while the Roka Maverick is coming in at $250 is this is about as basic a wetsuit as you could possibly get. So it's going to not fit nearly as well. It's not going to be as flexible. It is very clearly an entry level wetsuit with an entry level price point. Same sort of price point, but I think not nearly as good as Roka. Now this is the Xterra wetsuit. This is actually my first wetsuit and I think that this is a fine wetsuit. I think it's fairly comparable to this tier here as far as the number of features that it has, but the eh, Xterra does something a little wonky here. So as you can see, it's $400 where I said all of these were gonna be under $300, but on their very own site here, you can get the same wetsuit for instead of $400, for $160. So they're playing this game where they price it high, discount it on their own website. Yeah, it gets you a wetsuit that's under $300. I think that the features in this are acceptable. They're perfectly fine. If $160 is your absolute top of the limit, I think you're better off with this than the first wetsuit that I mentioned because I've used this and this is a cheap enough price point that you can use it, resell it for probably close to what you paid for. You're just not going to get a lot of features from it. This next wetsuit here, I think is probably the best comparison to the Roka wetsuit. This is the Blue 70 Sprint. It's coming in at $260 and this has more features. This has different panels along the underside of the arms to be able to have that a little bit of additional flexibility. It also has cuffs around the ankles that make it a little bit more flexible around the ankles to kick off. But where I lean more towards the Roka is when you go down into the product description and we've got a 344 buoyancy profile. That means that there is basically three points of buoyancy in the upper body, four in the midsection, four in the lower section. Now, if you are a former swimmer and you're really good at being horizontal with the water, this is probably the wetsuit that you want. If you are like most triathletes getting in and not comfortable in the water, your ankles aren't easily up at the surface of the water, you probably want a buoyancy profile where there's significantly less buoyancy in the upper body than there is in the lower body to get those legs up more 
So the buoyancy profile in the Roka Maverick is going to be a little bit better for those types of athletes because you're just gonna be closer to the surface of the water creating a little bit less drag. And that's always been why I've never even approached Blue 70 to talk to them about swimming in their wetsuits because they historically have designed wetsuits that are good for good swimmers in my opinion. And then we do have a couple of other options. We have Hoob, I've actually used Hoob wetsuits in the past. I've found them to not be as flexible as Roka. And then we've got Orca, which I've never tried whatsoever. There also really isn't any availability as of 2021. And then Zone 3, same sort of thing, coming in around the same price point, $275, $280 US. But I've just never heard Zone 3 to like be this breakout superstar wetsuit company, whereas Roka has, frankly. When Roka designed their original Roka Maverick Pro, they ended up creating a wetsuit that was so good that athletes were leaving their wetsuit companies to swim in the Roka wetsuit for free. Unsponsored, they would go and buy it themselves. That's how good it was. And I think they've done a similar thing with this new Maverick coming in at $250 while having all of that trickle down of the technology from the Maverick Pro coming down into a $250 wetsuit, which historically you've had to give up with some of these other wetsuits, either fit, flexibility, or flotation. With the Roka Maverick, you get all three at 250 bucks. And I really think that this is such a game changer that it's really going to put a lot of pressure on the competitors, but I think it's also going to put a lot of pressure on Roka's wetsuit themselves. I think the Roka Maverick Comp, which is priced at $395, has a little bit of additional buoyancy, but for whatever reason, I kind of prefer swimming in this $250 wetsuit. So if you're looking for a beginner triathlon wetsuit and your budget is under $300, looking at the current state of what the options are out there in the world, I think that you can't do any better than a $250 Roka Maverick wetsuit. And I expect this to be the same for the rest of 2021 and certainly into 2022, because I think the competitors have a fair bit of catching up to do. Now, if you're watching this video, I imagine you are looking for help with beginner endurance training. Well, we have an app for that that you can check out for free for 14 days, which has all of your race training for every discipline in endurance sports that you want, swim, bike, running races, triathlons, duathlons, all your strength training, all your yoga training. You can check it out for free for 14 days by clicking the link in the description below. Now, if you're not into trying the app or buying a wetsuit right now, but you just like this video and wanna show a little bit of appreciation for the hard work that we've done checking out all of these products, just hit the like button below. It lets us know that you liked this video. Later, Trainiacs.